characteristic um, do um, reducers share in common? Reducers all have electrons to give. And uh, the strong reducers give up the electrons a lot easier than the weak reducers. There's a nothing, um, in other words, like they call that electron rich. You know, if there's something electron rich, then maybe they have some electrons to give out. And so methane must be electron. What, what about methane that makes it electron rich? Metals are normally electron rich, you know, metals got electrons. Well, what about methane? Methane's not a metal. Jalen, yeah. The four hydrogens? Is it because of the four hydrogens? Um, when we think about the hydrogens, we think in terms of the oxidation state. What is the oxidation state on the four hydrogens? The oxidation state is actually plus one. And so we'll write that in the parentheses. We normally write it in parentheses like this and call it plus one, like that. That would be the oxidation state. So do the hydrogens have electrons to give? Not really, because hydrogen, the element, only has one electron per atom. It loses that, it forms H plus. There are no electrons. So I would call it proton. There are no electrons. So it's not the hydrogens. It must be the must be the carbon. So the carbon is what the electron rich species. The carbon, what is the charge on the carbon or the oxidation state on the carbon? Minus four. You know, when we write ions, we usually write the number first and then the charge. But for oxidation states, it's always the charge, then the number. And so the carbon's electron rich. When you burn methane, what do you form? Or when methane explodes, what, what forms? CO2 and, CO2 and water, yeah. And so over here, but CO2, um, can CO2 be burnt further? Or is that the end? Is that, is this? Burn, if we burn methane completely, do we stop at CO2 or do we keep going? We stop. We stop. And uh, what would the charge on carbon here be? Plus four. Plus four. And the oxygen? Minus two. Yeah. And so carbon's plus four. And the normal oxidation state range for carbon is between what and what? The charge range for carbon is between one and four. It's not one and four. Four, yes. Between four and Well, we probably need to look at the periodic table for that. If you look at the periodic table, what is the range, charge range for carbon? Yeah, plus four or minus four. And so these are carbons at the opposite end of the spectrum. Therefore, these, these two carbons behave quite a bit differently than one another. This carbon we call electron rich. However, this carbon would not be termed electron rich. Can we take any more electrons from that carbon? No, that's already maxed out. No, that would be poor, if anything. So, um, those are. And so this is what we call complete combustion. But we might not always go to complete combustion because another thing I see all the time in the news. I see natural gas explosions, and I see this all the time. Carbon monoxide poisoning. I see this all the time. And carbon monoxide is because of 
incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion because carbon is, what's the oxidation state of carbon here? Plus two. And since it's plus two, each carbon can lose an additional two electrons. It's not done. Here's where it's well done. This carbon's well done. It can't lose any more electrons. But this one, nah, can go further. Or soot. Now, fortunately, people don't, well, they, they might get like black, is black lung from soot? Yeah, maybe. Soot can be hazardous as well, but in a different way. But this, this carbon's in the zero, so we got soot. These are products of incomplete combustion. So when we go to complete combustion here, this is complete. We call this complete oxidation. Oxidation means he's stripping off. And this we call incomplete or partial oxidation. So we can do partial oxidation as well. And so when we burn methane, we just assume it's going to be complete, complete oxidation. So if I want to figure out uh, the reaction for this, then um, I have one more tool that I can use to determine, especially for these organics and also for other things as well, not just for organics. But you know, methane's not on this chart, but you know, I can derive the half reaction for methane. I can derive the half reaction as long as I know what the major product is. Even if, you know, even if it's soot or carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, it doesn't matter which of these products it is. I just got to figure out which one I want it to go to. And so this method is called skeleton redox. Skeleton redox. And skeleton redox allows me to derive half reactions based on um, the given products. So uh, it allows me to determine half reactions if a given reactants and product so let's do an example here let's say I want the half reaction for the methane and the half reaction is going to be methane is the reactant CO2 is the product you know or I could go to carbon monoxide or I could go to soot it doesn't matter but let's pick CO2 because that should be the product of combustion. So there's some steps involved in this. So let's go through the steps. And there's not that many steps. And the steps are, are after you do a few of these, they aren't that hard to remember. This is called a skeleton half reaction right here. So a skeleton half reaction. It's not complete, you know, but it's got the, you know, the uh, the bones of the reaction there. The main part of the reaction. To complete it, um, we just start off with the skeleton, and then the first step is to balance all elements. Except hydrogen and oxygen by changing the coefficient. So here, there's one carbon on both sides. I have one carbon on the left, I have one carbon on the right, so I don't have to do anything. If they weren't balanced, then I just change the coefficient. For example, I'd make two carbon dioxides, or I'd make you know, three carbon dioxides. It depends on how mismatched they are. So I got one carbon, one carbon. All right, then uh, we go on to the next step. The next step is we're going to balance the oxygens. Balance oxygen O by adding H2Os. And so on the left, I have zero oxygen, so I'm going to put it in these boxes like this. On the right, I have two oxygens. And so to balance this, I'm going to add two H2Os. So I bring that up here. I'll, I'll combine everything later. Okay, in the next step, we balance 
the H's by adding H plus. So uh, on the left I have four H's. On the right I have two times two is four H's. So the H's are balanced. I don't need to add anything. Um, you know, then uh, finally I balance the charge by by adding electrons. Balance charge by adding electrons. Electrons are kind of funny because electrons are negative, and so what you're doing is you're canceling out positive charges. You're going to cancel out positive charges until the two sides match. Here. So when I look at this, um, what is the charge on the left? Charge on the left is, well, I have methane. Methane and nothing else. That's zero. The charge on the right is I have CO2, which is neutral, so zero charge. I'm talking about net charge, not the oxidation state. Some water. Water is neutral, so that's zero charge. Here. So when I add this up, I have C4 goes to CO2 plus 2H2O. This has screwed something up there. Do you see where I made my mistake? Does that look balanced to you? That doesn't look balanced to me. See where I screwed it up? I see where I screwed it up. Do you see where I screwed it up? Step two. I screwed it up at step two. On the left, I have no oxygens. On the right, I have two oxygens. So I'm supposed to balance it by adding water. But I added it to the wrong side. Because now, on the right, I have two plus two is four oxygens on the right, and I still have no oxygens on the left. Oxygen atoms aren't balanced. I screwed this up. Sorry. Let me fix that. I should have put the plus two H2O on the left. Now I have two oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. And so that's going to change the hydrogen count. If I look, how many hydrogens total do I have on the left? Well, I have four from the methane plus four from the water, which gives me a total of eight hydrogens. On the left and on the right, how many hydrogens do I have? I have no hydrogens right. And so what I have to do is I have to add eight H pluses here. I don't worry about the charge yet. I worry about the charge on the last step, which is here. Methane has a net uh, neutral or zero charge. Water has a net zero charge. So zero and zero and zero is all zeros. So this is correct. It's zero. Over here, CO2 is neutral, no charge. Um, but H plus is charged, and so this is going to not be zero, it's plus eight. And so I'm going to um, balance the charge by canceling out positives until they match. So how many positives? Oh, that's zero. I've got to cancel out eight positives by adding eight electrons here. If I add eight electrons, now it's balanced. So let's try it again. This is going to be CH4 plus two H2O liquids yields CO2 gas plus 8H plus plus 8 electrons. Now, it's, it's easy to make mistakes here um, with uh, addition as well. So we check if it's balanced. When we check redox for balance or anything for balance, we first check atom balance and then we check charge balance. So one carbon, one carbon, four plus four is eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, one oxygen, or two oxygens, two oxygens. So the atoms are balanced. Then this is zero charge, zero charge, zero charge, plus eight, minus eight. 
So we got net zero charge on the left, net zero charge on the right. So this is a balanced half reaction. So they are balanced half reaction. So um, what we could do is we could just take that one and then um, what's the other reactant that we have? Well, it's going to be methane with with oxygen. And so we're going to pick the, uh, the correct oxygen. second one by two, so we'll double it. So that's going to be two, that's going to be eight, that's going to be eight, that's going to be four. So we got eight electrons consumed, eight electrons produced, and then we combine them. So when we combine them, I'll add up all the uh, reactants here. CH4 plus 2H2O liquids plus 2O2s plus 8H plus, so all the reactants, and then all the products, CO2 plus 8H plus plus 4H2O. And then let's see if there's a driving force. CH4 and H2O, that's going to be our reducing or oxidizing agent. So reducing agent. And therefore, the conjugate, CO2 and water, uh, excuse me, H plus, this will be our oxidizing agent. And then over here, O2 and H plus, that's our oxidizing agent. And then our conjugate here, water, would be our reducing agent. So we can assign everything over here. Methane and water, that's our reducing agent. O2 and H plus, that's our oxidizing agent. CO2 and H plus, that's our oxidizing agent. And water here is our reducing agent. And so what's a better oxidizer? Oxygen or carbon dioxide? What do you think is a stronger oxidizer? Oxygen or carbon dioxide? In, in other words, if you want to build a fire, let's say you're building a fire with methane, what would work better? To um, support combustion with oxygen or to support combustion with carbon dioxide? With oxygen. Why? Because oxygen is a better oxidizer. In fact, they, they use carbon dioxide in fire extinguishers. Did you know that? So carbon dioxide is not a very good oxidizer. Yeah, there are some fires that you absolutely never, ever want to use a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Because if you use a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher, you're fanning the flames. You're adding oxidizer to it. What type of fires are those? Metal fires. Metal fires. Never, ever use a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher for metal fires. Because metals are powerful reducers. 
And even though CO2 is an extremely weak oxidizer, it's strong enough to oxidize metals in a fire. And so CO2 should not be used. But wood fires, uh, CO2 is used to extinguish those. But anyway, um, so we're going from stronger to weaker here. And, um, methane versus water. Which one's easier to burn, methane or water? Methane, methane, water. How, how easy is it to burn water? Have you ever tried to build a fire using water? Maybe, but usually water is used to put out fires. But do not use water also on metal fires. Do not use water on metal fires. Okay, so we're going from stronger to weaker. So this driving force here. In other words, we got to simplify this. If, if you look, what are the spectators? H plus, gone. Two waters, gone. And so what do we have? We have methane plus O2 yields CO2 and water. And you go, why did it go through all that hassle? I know what combustion reactions are. Combustion reactions are, you take it and you form CO2 and, and water. So it's easier to memorize that than to derive it, right? In most cases. But the power of this method is, is more so um, in this respect because we could do other things as well. Not all explosions involve oxygen. You know, there are even more powerful oxidizers than oxygen. Can you name one oxidizer that's more powerful than oxygen? Can you name one oxidizer that's more powerful than oxygen? Well, actually, I can name a lot of oxidizers that are more powerful than oxygen. Here's oxygen. What's more powerful than oxygen? All these are more powerful than oxygen. In fact, permanganate is number five on this list. Oxygen is number 10. So permanganate, permanganate's an interesting one because um, you know, all those explosions, you know, th th those always have me worried. So fortunately, we know when there's a natural gas leak because we, we should be able to detect it, right? But there are other potential explosions. I had an explosion that occurred in Chem 1B. Um, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty big explosion, but uh, fortunately, nobody was severely injured in that explosion. But um, what, what was that explosion involved? Well, the explosion involved this. I had a student who missed lab, and so they were doing a makeup lab. And so I said, okay, you can do a makeup lab this week. And so we had the equipment set up for both labs. The current lab involved um, potassium permanganate. Do you know what the formula for potassium permanganate is? KMNO4, potassium permanganate, common chemical, looks like grape juice in solution. The potassium permanganate and HCl were in this jug. This is waste jug number one. This is the, the glass jugs that are in the hood. People dump their waste in here. There's a funnel on top here. The student was making up a lab. The lab that the student was making up involved using ethanol. You know, ethanol to, um, to get some crystals, actually, is what the ethanol was being used for. And so I had I set up two waste jugs. One waste jug for the student, the makeup lab, and the other waste jug for everybody else. And so I just left the old waste jug. So waste jug here. And I told the student, um, you know, make sure to put your waste into this waste jug, not into that waste jug, because this waste jug contained ethanol. It's fine. But what happened was that the student poured the ethanol into this waste jug and it exploded, it exploded. But fortunately, uh, there was no cap on this, so the glass didn't explode. There was just a huge fireball that shot up. I mean, a big, loud explosion and a huge fireball that shot up out of this. And um, the, the student was a little shorter, so they had their face kind of in, almost inside the hood. You know, the door was up like this. 
in the, their whole face was first degree burn, fortunately, and then hair got burned. But and it was a big, loud bang. But fortunately, uh, nothing serious, uh, which is really lucky because it could have been worse. I mean, if that glass exploded, there'd have been glass shards all over. But got really lucky. And so, what was the reaction here? Well, first off, what is ethanol? You know, is ethanol a strong acid? Well, is ethanol an acid? Ethanol acid? Not really. Is it a base? No. What is its formula? This is one of the ways of writing it. It, it might look like hydroxide, but it's not a hydroxide. It's not an acid, it's not a base. Is it an ion? You know, is it a strong cation or a strong anion? No, so it's not an ion, so metathesis is kind of out. It's not an acid, really. It's not a base, really. So acid base is out. That leaves what? That leaves redox. Now, is one thing about a lot of these organics, these carbon-containing compounds, is that they're flammable. You know, except for CO2. CO2 is not flammable. But... Um, in other words, they're electron rich. So how electron rich is ethanol? And let's compare it to methane. Methane is probably the most electron rich carbon. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to compress this into uh, two carbons here, six hydrogens here, and an oxygen. Th this is one way of writing ethanol, but not very descriptive. Another way of writing it is C2H5OH. So th they show this OH part, which is part of the alcohol. But um, hydrogen is what? Plus one. Oxygen is minus two. That means carbon must be carbon must be minus two. And so in methane, carbon is minus four. So going from minus four to plus four, how many electrons were lost? From minus four to plus four, how many electrons? So if, when I look at methane, well, actually I raised the equation, but how many electrons were lost by methane? One methane lost how many electrons? Eight, eight electrons. We went from minus four all the way to plus four. To go from minus four to plus four, we gotta lose eight electrons, and that's what we saw in the balanced half reaction, was eight electrons being lost per carbon. So this is pretty electron rich too, because this has the capability of losing not eight electrons, but it has the capability of losing how many electrons if we go all the way to CO2? Six electrons, that's pretty electron rich. And so ethanol, we'd say, is highly flammable. It's pretty electron rich, you gotta be careful. It's a good reducer. And so I'd rank it, even though it's not on this chart, I'd rank ethanol, you know, around here. Pretty strong reducer. And so let's see what was the reaction that occurred here. Well, let's break down the reaction. If we break down the reaction, I'm going to inventory. So I got potassium, I got permanganate, I have H+, I have Cl-, I have water, and I have ethanol. Um, potassium ions, oxidizer. Permanganate, permanganate, oxidizer with H+, plus. permanganate and H+, plus. H+, plus alone, oxidizer. Chloride, reducer, water, both. Ethanol, reducer. Okay, now the oxidizers, I have one, two, three oxidizers. All three oxidizers are on the chart. Which one's the strongest? All three oxidizers are on the chart. Which one's strongest, do you think? Per, per manganate. Per manganate is the strongest. So we see it. fluorine is the strongest on the chart, and the permanganate is number five. And we'd have to go quite a ways down to get to H plus. H plus is down here, and then much farther down for water. 
system. So our oxides are going to be formanganate and H+. But well, what's our reducer going to be? So out of all these, which one is it easier to build a fire with? Chloride. Like, let's say you ran out of wood, but you have a bottle of table salt. Could you build a fire using table salt instead? Is table salt electron rich? Would chloride make a good fire? No, chlor chlorine holds onto that electron tightly. It doesn't let it, let it go. Chloride's not. How about water? You ran out of wood, just build a fire out of water. Is that going to work? No, not going to work. Water, let me, let me take a moment and talk about water. Water is kind of interesting because both, water is both an oxidizer and reducer. So in one sense, water is electron rich. What about water makes it electron rich? It's not, you know, it's not that rich, but what about water? Is it the hydrogen in water or is it the oxygen in water that makes it electron rich? It's the hydrogen. And so if we look at the hydrogen, what's the charge on hydrogen, the oxidation state? It's plus one. That's not electron rich. Oxygen minus two. Now, the problem is it's really hard to take those two electrons away from oxygen because oxygen wants two electrons. That's why oxygen is such a powerful oxidizer. Oxygen is a powerful oxidizer because it wants to take electrons. Oxygen wants to take electrons. Once it has those electrons, it doesn't want to let them go. And so this is why water is not going to make a great fire because oxygen just doesn't want to lose that, those electrons. It holds on to them. So if you had a choice um, of three different fuels to make a fire, chloride, water, or ethanol, which of those three would you suspect? Well, you know, ethanol's not on this chart. Well, if it's not on this chart, then is that a fair question to ask? Maybe that's totally unfair to ask. Or is it? What would you guess it'd be? If you're going to build a fire, chloride, water, or ethanol, and you look at the chart and you go, huh, chloride's here, water is here, so it looks like water is better than chloride. Go with water, and ethanol's not on the chart, so let's go with water. Would you do that? No, you, you, you should know this. This should be what you call um, common knowledge. Common knowledge is ethanol and all, um, pretty much all alcohols are highly flammable. And so the best or the strongest reducing agent will be this. And so my oxidizing agent's this, my reducing agent's that. Well, my oxidizing agent's easy because I have the half reaction right here. The half reaction for the oxidizing agent is this. One permanganate plus eight H plus, and I don't worry about the ratio here. We'll balance all out at the end. Plus five electrons goes to Mn2 plus plus four H2O. But then I go, I don't have the um, half reaction for ethanol. I don't have the half reaction for ethanol, so what should I do? Well, I'm in luck because I know the skeleton redox method. And the skeleton redox method says um, if I know the reactant, well, I do know the reactant, the reactant is ethanol, and I know the product. Well, when ethanol is oxidized, what does it get oxidized to? So we said the ethanol has, uh, well, it's minus two, carbon is minus two, and it, it can lose how many electrons? Six electrons and going to the ultimate end. The ultimate end would be, the ultimate end product would be CO2. That's complete oxidation, what we call complete oxidation. It doesn't have to go complete. I mean, we could have partial oxidation, but when there's an explosion, we expect complete oxidation like this. There could be mild oxidation, which I'll talk about later. Okay, can you generate the half reaction, the balanced half reaction for this? I'm try it. Let me know what you get. We don't have much time, do we? Yeah, in the last couple of minutes, um, generate the balanced half reaction. 